When it comes to pay-per-views in WWE that have good concepts but bad results, the first three pay-per-views that come to my mind are Over the Limit 2010, Over the Limit 2011, and believe it or not, Over the Limit 2012. The Over the Limit concept was a good concept. You know, the main event was revolved around an extreme type of stipulation match that pushes both competitors, dare I say, part of the pun, over the limit. You know, I liked how the main events of all three pay-per-views were either an I Quit match or a no disqualification match or some sort of, had some sort of extreme stipulation. And that makes the concept of the show good. But damn, all three over-the-limit pay-per-views when it comes to match quality, when it comes to storylines, when it comes to pretty much everything else, every other aspect that makes a good pay-per-view, all three over-the-limit pay-per-views were very, very disappointing. <laughs> and I look back at the 2010 over-the-limit pay-per-view, and the first thing that comes to my mind is when I look back at this card is what a difference five years makes. I mean, I could scroll through the card right now. You know, Kofi Kingston, part of the New Day. Drew McIntyre, no longer in the company. R-Truth, irrelevant. Ted DiBiase, gone. Mysterio, gone. Punk, gone. Half of the Hart Dynasty is gone, the other half is injured. Jericho, part-timer. Miz, irrelevant. Edge, retired. Orton, injured. Big Show, still being forced down people's throats for no reason. Jack Swagger, Again, irrelevant. Eve Torres and Maurice, both gone. Cena, injured. Batista, retired. What a difference five years makes. I just named you the entire card, and out of all of those people, only a handful of them are still with the company today, and when I look back at this card, they're pretty much in the same spots they were back then. And that's really sad. But that doesn't begin to describe the sadness of Over the Limit 2010. Uh, the first match is a perfect example. Kofi Kingston versus Drew McIntyre. You know, the match wasn't terrible, but why did Kofi win here? Continue to push Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre had something going for you, WWE, and you completely pulled, pumped the brakes, and you completely said, you know what, screw this guy. Who needs Drew McIntyre when he only has everything you are fucking looking for? The guy can talk, the guy has wrestling skills, the guy has the size you want, the guy is kind of unique, he's everything that you want in a star, why did you not push him? He was Vince McMahon's chosen one, Vince McMahon's chosen one, and you couldn't push him. WWE, what the fuck? And then R-Truth versus Ted DiBiase. A feud that didn't matter, a feud that I didn't care about, and our truth won. Whoop de doo, match was not that good. Uh, Rey Mysterio beat CM Punk would probably be one of the two matches of the night. Um, I did not like how Mysterio. Well, I actually did like how Mysterio went over here. Um, I thought that he should have went over here instead of going over at WrestleMania, but that's just my opinion. This match was really solid. It was perfectly put on the card in the mid card. And it was immediately followed up by a really solid tag team title match between the Hart Dynasty and Chris Jericho and The Miz. Remember when those two were teaming up? Jesus. What a, again, what a difference five years makes. Um, another solid tag team match. A good showpiece for the Hart Dynasty. Uh, gives Miz and Jericho something to do at the time. Uh, the match itself was good. I'm glad that the Hart Dynasty won because there was really no reason for Jericho and The Miz to win. But again, it's really sad when you look at the Hart Dynasty. One is no longer there. The other is pretty much no longer there because he's injured. And their manager is pretty much irrelevant. It's it's Natalia. It's part of the Divas division. It means absolutely nothing. Um, the three reasons why I absolutely hate this show are as follows. Edge versus Randy Orton. If you want to understand the state of WWE during that time... Let me remind you that during this match, Randy Orton injured himself on a taut. A damn taut. How pathetic and sad is that? 
that Randy Orton had a real-life injury on a taunt. That just shows you the terrible state of this of this era in WWE, especially going back to 2010. And it, I get it that they they had to end it early, uh, double count out because of Orton's injury. Um, but that doesn't give the match an excuse to suck, especially the parts before Orton got injured were still terrible. So this match still sucked. Big Show defeating Jack Swagger by DQ for the World Heavyweight Championship. You know, this match ends in a disqualification. You immediately follow a double countout with a disqualification in a World Championship match. And what makes this even worse is the fact that the match only went five minutes. It went five minutes and five seconds, to be exact. Yeah, that's sad. The match itself sucked. So, I'm kind of glad that it went only five minutes. But damn. Jack Swagger was your world champion in 2010. How pathetic and sad is that? You immediately follow up this, this wonderful chain of events with a Divas title match. Once again, no one cared. Eve went over against Maurice. Yay. And that's all I have to say about this match. But what I really hate about this pay-per-view was the predictability of your main event. And unfortunately, WWE decided to really outdo themselves and follow up 2010 with another I Quit match involving John Cena in 2011. At no point in this match did I expect Batista to go over here. It is an I Quit match, and it involves John Cena. The match itself was okay. The finish was really cool. Uh, Cena giving the AA off the car through the stage. I actually liked that match. I actually liked that moment. Uh, the match itself was not that great. And that's a shame because in these types of matches, you have the opportunity to do pretty much anything you want. Any little thing. Because it's an extreme stipulation match. It's an I quit match. Like, you could go wherever you want, do whatever you want, and it fell flat on its face. Like, pretty much a majority of the year of 2010 fell flat on its face. And that's really sad. And then you get to Over the Limit 2011. Ah. Uh... Pretty much a one-match show. At least Over the Limit 2010 had two solid matches where I can look back at and actually like. I think Over the Limit 2011 was a one-match show. You know, you open up with R-Truth versus Rey Mysterio. I get it that you have to build up R-Truth as a heel since you turned him heel. Uh, a good dance partner would be Rey Mysterio. The match was alright. I will not go back and care about it or watch it over and over again. But it was all right. Solid opener, but nothing more than that. Our truth went over, which was good. Ezekiel Jackson defeats Wade Barrett by disqualification for the IC title. And every time I think back at this match, the one thing I think about is the core. And I hate the core. I hated Nexus. So imagine my thought process when the core debuted. Oh, Christ. Um, Sin Cara versus Chavo Guerrero, he, Sin Cara goes over, he botches yet again, you know, I really, really tried to give this guy a chance when he debuted in 2011, and I just couldn't, I understand that nobody is perfect in the ring, but damn, if you're going to botch every single match that you're in, I really start to question why you're even in the business. I mean that personally. Sin Cara, as much as I wanted to get behind him, really pissed me off with all the botches. I know he, I know it's, again, no one's perfect in the ring, but at least try to be semi-decent. Let's be completely realistic. Uh, you had Big Show and Kane defeating the new Nexus in this tag title match. Again, every time I think about this match, the Nexus comes up. And once again, you are finding every single way to misuse CM Punk. 
up until, you know, of course, the big turn uh, after Capital Punishment going into Money in the Bank. Um, the one thing I hate about this is the fact that you built CM Punk up so poorly and then you have him go into this mega feud with John Cena where he's prepared to leave the company. You know, that's the only thing that I hated about that Punk storyline in 2011 was that he didn't really merit a world title match. He didn't really deserve it in storyline purposes. He, he didn't. You know, he <clears throat> uh, got eliminated by John Cena in the Rumble. Uh, I don't remember what he did at Chamber. He lost at WrestleMania. He lost the pay-per-view after. He loses here at Over the Limit. And all of a sudden, he beats Rey Mysterio at Capital Punishment. And all of a sudden, he's already glorified... Uh, guaranteed, excuse me, a WWE title. It just makes no sense. Um, uh, Brie Bella defeats Ke uh, Kelly Kelly in this Divas title match. Again, no one cared. I didn't care, especially considering that the wrong Bella was in the match. Uh, I love Nikki more than I love Brie. Uh, the match of the night, in my opinion, even though it, it, it sucked that it did not go 20 minutes, it should have went 20, but it did go 17 minutes, so I'll give them that. Match of the night was definitely Randy Orton versus Christian for the world title. My only complaint about this match was that Christian should have went over. You know, Christian should have gone into this pay-per-view with the belt, and he should have been world champion by the time this pay-per-view happened, and he should have been world champion walking out, and I would have been perfectly fine if he held the world title until SummerSlam, where Randy Orton won it back there. I would have been perfectly fine with that, but this match definitely saved this pay-per-view from being totally terrible and forgettable. Not that it wasn't terrible, but at least I have something to look back on and actually like and enjoy. And in typical WWE fashion, you follow this matchup with Jerry the King Lawler versus Michael Cole Part 3. As if the first and second matches weren't bad enough, you decide to give your two commentators a co-main event spot on a pay-per-view. Yeah. They were a featured match at WrestleMania, they were a featured match at Extreme Rules, and now they are the co-main event to a WWE pay-per-view over the limit 2011. Yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about this match. And finally, we end it with John Cena versus The Miz in an, another I Quit match. Once again, I like the concept of having the, night, the I Quit match at this pay-per-view. I just hate the fact that every single time it involved John Cena. Yeah, because at this point, you had absolutely, once again, no doubts on who was going to win. And even though you tried to pull that Mick Foley stuff during the match, once again, it, it, it felt really bland. This match... I actually did not like compared to Cena versus Batista the year before because there was just nothing going. It just felt like a wrestling match. It, there was no sort of extremeness to this match. It really felt underwhelming. I thought that the ending was very underwhelming. It seems that every time uh, there's an I Quit match, the ending of when they say I Quit just feels flat and half the time it's because John Cena is in the damn match but you know that's another story <clears throat> and then we get to over the limit 2012 and I will always remember this pay-per-view but not for a good reason I will always remember this pay-per-view as the reason why I stopped watching wrestling for eight months Yeah. WrestleMania 28. Great show. Extreme Rules, the show after. Another great show. Over the Limit 2012. Fucking awful. Terrible. And once again, a one-match show, but the match that did main event caused me to stop watching WWE for a majority of 2012. You know, you open up with... Uh, Battle Royal, winner gets a mid-card title shot. A year after you have Christian in a world title match, 
you saddle him with this IC title crap. You know, and it's not like this match had any sort of build to it. It was like, we opened up with a battle royal, and I'm like, where the hell did that come from? Was it this advertised? Was this promoted? Nothing. It was a battle royal. Christian won. That's all I have to say. The next match, tag title match. <clears throat> Kofi Kingston, R-Truth versus Ziggler and Swagger. Uh, for this match to go f at al almost 15 minutes, I expected it to be at least a little bit better. But it was, eh, it was alright. But that's about it. You had Layla defeating Beth Phoenix for the Divas title. Once again, another irrelevant, meaningless Divas title match. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, some may call the next match the match of the night. And I disagree with that because it was really put together randomly and I didn't care about it. Uh, the right guy did go over and that was Sheamus defending the world title against Randy Orton, Chris Jericho, and Alberto Del Rio in a four-way match. A solid match, but again, it was kind of predictable, and it wasn't set up properly. It just wasn't. Uh, then you had the IC title match, Christian defeating Cody Rhodes. Uh, I don't understand why Christian went over here. I think Cody should have, it's considering that he's only held the title for a month. Thank you, WWE, for ruining Cody Rhodes. Then we get to my match of the night. <coughs> and that is CM Punk versus Daniel Bryan. And I'm not saying that because of the internet smark in me. I'm saying this because literally nothing else on this card mattered, in my opinion. Especially the main event. And if you look back, I can argue that this match should have main evented because of just how bad the main event was. The one thing I loved about this match was the fact that they gave this match twenty, almost 25 minutes, and they say, do whatever you want. CM Punk went over, which I liked. And this match, even though I feel like we saw that match a lot in 2012, it was worth it, in my opinion. The match was really damn good. And that match should have main evented that pay-per-view, because... Obviously, nothing else would follow it. And then we get to the reason why I stopped watching wrestling in 2012. And that was John Cena versus John Laurinaitis. No disqualifications, no countouts, anything goes, and no one freaking cared. You did this whole authority storyline with... John Laurinaitis taking control of both shows, and never did I think that Cena was going to win here, and it leads to yet another damn Big Show heel turn that is so stupid and so old that you always expect, it. every time you see the Big Show, you're like, okay, when's he gonna turn? No different in 2012 than it is in 2015. There's no difference at all. But yeah, I hated this show because of that match. A great match that got buried in the shuffle because it needed to be followed by a non-wrestler versus John Cena. To top it all off, this match got 17 minutes. 17 minutes for a match between John Cena and John Laurinaitis, and it main evented a pay-per-view. Yeah, so that is why I stopped watching in 2012. I had absolutely no passion to watch the show after I saw that match. After I saw that WWE actually put that match in a main event of a pay-per-view. It was really dumb, really stupid, and up until early January, it might have been late December, but maybe early January of 2013 was when I started to rewatch wrestling because I found out that I was going to WrestleMania. But 
I always hate that show when I look back at it as the reason why my passion for wrestling was lost. Thankfully, now it's back, but it's running dangerously low. WWE needs to stop producing more shows like this uh, if they want to keep their fans watching, especially if they want to keep me watching.